So what would be the perfect betting strategy? Well, it would have to be profitable, of course, but ideally you'd want something where you'd have a defined entry point, relatively low downside, lots of potential upside, a defined exit point, and something that you knew what you were looking for and where you were likely to find it. But how realistic is it to find a strategy that will enable you to do that? Well, let me describe one to you in this video. I've been successfully betting and trading for over two decades. If you want more videos like this and you want me to describe more of what I do, then give us a like. If you want to talk to like-minded people, visit the Bet Angel Forum where you can do exactly that, but also visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel. So if you want to make money betting, what do you do? Well, you bet on things and you win money. So I'm going to give you a spoiler here. Iga Svantec won her match here. So what would you have done? Would you have placed a back bet, because we're using an exchange here, on her to win the match? Or would you have laid, knowing that she was going to win? Because laying is when you bet on somebody to lose, effectively. Well, of course, you would place a back bet. Now, Iga Svantec was available at very short odds. She was priced at 102 in decimal odds, which is 50 to 1 on to win this particular match. That's how big the golfing class was between these two opponents. The market had basically priced her to win. And even at these very short odds, it looked pretty obvious that she was going to win and therefore you'd almost certainly not lose this bet, which was why I decided to lay Iga Schwantek. So in this particular match, I went in and I laid Iga Svantec with £3,333.33 £33 at odds of 103. And you're sort of thinking, there's a lot of threes in there. Uh, why did you do that? Well, the interesting thing about the position that I took in this particular market is what I was doing is I was basically saying, I'm going to lay Iga Svantec uh, to a liability of £100. If you go into Bet Angel, you can actually uh, set up your staking in a number of different ways. And on this particular occasion, I was saying that if everything went wrong with this particular trade, I was willing to lose £100. But basically, if Igor Svantec went on uh, to lose the match, I could actually win up to £3,000. But of course, we've already discussed that she was very, very likely to win. And in fact, she did win this match. So how on earth did we profit? So why on earth did I decide to lay somebody at very, very short odds? Because we're saying that this person and it could apply to any market, is almost certainly going to win this particular match. Well, if you think about it logically, uh, if we were backing at odds of 102, basically the odds would go 102, 101, and then that would be it. There's only sort of a very, very small amount of potential uh, profit that we have within that particular market. But on the upside, there is absolutely huge amounts of potential. However, we know that the market is efficient and that Iga is definitely going to win this match on a very, very regular basis if you played it 100 times. However, we're not particularly interested in whether the market is efficient or not. What we're more interested in is how the market moves as the match gets underway. So one of the great things about tennis is it can be highly variable. You could be three love up in a set lose your serve and then all of a sudden it's three all. And that leads to some great trading opportunities. And when we're actually trading a market, we're not betting on the outcome of the market because we expect that to be efficient. We're betting on the variation that occurs during the match. So what we're saying is the market starts here, it will end down here when uh, this particular player wins, um, but it won't be a straight line. It will wobble all over the place on the way to that finality. And this occurs for a number of reasons. But when you look at big tournaments, what you tend to find is that you do get these mismatches of heavy odds on favourites against much lower ranked players. But the much lower ranked player will really go for it because this is their chance to be able to get one over on a bigger player, progress further into the tournament, get more prize money, more ranking points and so on. Um, so as a consequence, you tend to find that um, the players that are lower ranked will tend to basically step up for things in that first set. And especially when you're looking at women's matches, if they can get that first set, it's the best of three. So they've got a fair chance of going on to win the match. And also the more experienced player will have their eyes on the prize. They will be looking to win the tournament. So they don't want to take too many risks because, of course, strange things can happen in tennis. And you could pick up an injury which will affect your chance of winning the match and therefore winning the tournament. So 
higher ranked players tend to ease themselves in to that first set. But you could also get lucky shots, um, uh, all sorts of strange things happening. And all you need are basically two shots to go against you on serve, and then you're in danger of having a break of serve. If your serve gets broken, or it looks like your serve will be broken, then the prices will start to shoot out. And that's what we're trying to capture. The essence of trading is not whether the price is efficient over here, over here, or in the middle of the match. It's that variability that you see during the match. That is where you will profit if you're effectively trading on a tennis match. So the premise of what we've done here, basically, is at the beginning of the match, we've laid the red hot favorite with a large amount of money. But because they're a red hot favorite, our total liability is very small and it's capped because of the way that we've gone into the market. We've laid £3,333 at odds of 103, which means that our liability is £100, but our potential gain, if they were to lose the match, is fairly significant. In this case, £3,333.33. Um, but of course, we're not expecting that to happen. We're expecting that they will win the match, but they may just have to take a meandering path to be able to get there. We're just looking for a little bit of variability and fluctuation within those odds during the match and that will give us our chance to profit. So the price at which we can get into this particular trade is completely dictated by the market because we're looking at the market before the match has started. Everybody's done their homework and they know roughly what price should be on each of these individual players. So we have to get in at a fixed price. But when would we get out on this trade? Well, the great thing about tennis is that if you get a break of serve, you'll see the odds move and shift significantly in the favor of the player that has got the break of serve. So typically you would look for a break of serve and that would dictate the price at which you would exit this particular trade. Now, the interesting thing is that actually you don't need to get a break of serve. You just need to make it for the match underlying to look as though there will be a break of serve. So it could be love 30 or love 40 on serve and the odds will roughly get into this exit position for you. So it's not actually the number of breaks of serves that create the opportunity, it's the potential for a break that very often creates the opportunity. Throughout the match, the odds have to reflect the current scoreline, um, so that is why that happens. But what should the odds be if you're trying to get out? Well, we can provide the answer to you because on Bet Angel you fire up Tennis Trader and then that will actually tell you what uh, the odds will be if a break of serve is likely to occur. You tend to find that at the beginning of a set, it's slightly um, shorter rods, but at the end of the set, when a break of serve will be more significant, it will be higher odds. But if we basically look at Tennis Trader on this particular match, you can see it was indicating that the price would move out to about 112 or in, in the region of that area if there was a break of serve. So that is where you would put your closing trade. So I hear the question coming at me now, which is, well, how often does this happen? Well, the remarkable thing is, even when you look at very, very short odds, we're looking here at a match where the favourite is 50 to 1 on, it's 102 in decimal odds. Um, the chance of their price moving out, the chance of their price drifting from them not uh, being in complete control is actually quite common. So we're looking at very, very short odds, about 70% of the time during a tennis match, you will actually see the price of the favourite drift. It doesn't mean necessarily that it will get that break of serve, uh, but nonetheless, the price will drift. There is an opportunity there from a trading perspective. As you start to increase those, uh, the odds that the favourite starts at, obviously the chance of them winning is slightly less certain and therefore the chance of the price drifting shoots up quite dramatically. So my answer to your question, having looked at over 30,000 matches on this particular strategy, is that it occurs much more frequently than you would expect. So just to reinforce this point, as I'm recording this video, Iga Schwantek is playing her next match. She went off at odds of 1.2 in decimal odds, uh, five to one on, and she has just lost the first set. So you'll be amazed at how often this occurs. Of course, there are situations where it doesn't occur and you'll have to take that loss. You may want to trim that loss somehow, uh, but typically this occurs much more frequently than you would expect. So in summary, regardless of where a player's odds start in a tennis match, uh, they can meander fairly significantly throughout the match for a number of reasons. The style of play, the tactics of individual players, injuries, rain breaks, lucky uh, calls, uh, fluke shots, all manner of things can cause the tennis odds to move around during the match itself. The market has to reflect the, the chances of 
a player winning, and that is a direct reflection on the score within the underlying match. So the market must move to correlate with that. But that presents the opportunity to us from a trading perspective. We're not too fussed about what chance they have of winning the match. We're more interested in that variability that we see during the match. And if you actively trade it, then you can profit from it. And what we've done with very, very short odds is we like to go in and lay those because the downside is limited. Uh, but there is a fair amount of variability that occurs during the course of play. And if you sit on either side of that and pick your entry and exit points correctly, then you can profit from it.